All right, well, I'm Tim Daldrop. Welcome to this pitch training. Um, I'm incubation manager of Startup Wageningen. And uh, Startup is the student startup incubator of the Wageningen University. And what we do is support and teach students the basics of entrepreneurship. We think that entrepreneurial competencies and um, entrepreneurial skills can really help students um, at the university to have a more interesting career, but also create value for society in a more constructive way or in a different way, I should say, than we're taught in academia. Entrepreneurial skills um, uh, uh, gives you the ability to translate the uh, knowledge that's in your heads that you learn in academia to apply that into a practical manner into uh, our society. And we need that. We need sustainable uh, uh, minds. We need social minds um, to use the knowledge and apply the knowledge that we find in uh, uh, in our universities and apply that in, um, in society. One of these skills um, is pitching. Um, there are many others like teamworking, uh, like uh, business modeling, and there are also quite a few mindset related things that we can help you um, develop because an entrepreneur thinks in many ways very similar to an academic, but acts very, very differently. And that's how we uh, how we go about. Um, for a lot of the trainings and courses we do, we think that the entrepreneurial skills you learn, like in a challenge you're doing now, you can take them along in your career later on as a as an as a scientist, um, as a manager, as a policymaker. But of course, while doing that, while learning these entrepreneurial skills, quite a few people also start their own initiative, uh, their own NGO, their own business to have a positive impact on uh, our planet or uh, local societies. Um, that's a uh, part of my responsibility here. I run our student incubator together also with uh, a team uh, of coaches and a very large network of mentors who are experienced business people, uh, experts, businesses who are connected to our incubator. Um, and also with a couple of students who uh, stop their studies for one year to uh, full time support uh, the running of our incubator and organizing all kinds of events. Uh, kinds of events. I have this banner behind me because yesterday evening we had an event called uh, uh, Inspiration uh, about all kinds of uh, fungi and fungi innovations. Uh, there are quite a few more of them coming up and it doesn't matter if you're a Wageningen University student or well, studying elsewhere in the world, um, you're very much welcome to uh, have a look at our events. And also we're starting to recruit for uh, the next academic year a new student board. So if you're interested in learning uh, about entrepreneurship, organizing very cool events, meeting a lot of uh, uh, entrepreneurs and building a nice network for yourself in a professional environment like we have here, then uh, feel free to uh, send me a message. I'll share my contact details at the end of the pitch training. Well, that's enough about me and, uh, and the start hub. Um, oh, my clicker is not doing what it should. So let's go to the basics of pitching. I uh, understood that Marco can do uh, the, the chat for me. Um, before we go uh, to any exercises, because we're not going to sit still here, entrepreneurial skills are not going to uh, um, be lectured to you today. That's impossible. Entrepreneurial skills should be done and learned and practiced. Before we do that, I would like to give you a little bit of, of context and uh, please type your answers in the chat. Um, what do you think is the difference between pitching versus presenting? I give you a few seconds to come up with your answer. Type them in the chat and then I hope Marco can uh, read out a few uh, interesting ones. So pitching versus presenting. Uh, 
Any answers coming in so far? Uh, yeah, we have the first answer coming in, and that's pitching is shorter and interactive. Uh, pitching is short, and only the main point while presenting is with precise date. Sorry. <laughs> pitching is short, and only the main point while presenting is with precise data and takes usually longer. And another one that's similar also, pitching is short, and it's nice if it can somehow convince people, whereas a presentation is informative. Yeah, very nice. Uh, you've hit on uh, some of the uh, most important points. Indeed, pitching is very different from presenting. I'm clearly presenting to you today. I'm gonna, um, I'm talking to you for longer than, uh, well, just five or six minutes. Um, I do bring with me some kind of message that I want you to act upon, right? I'm encouraging you in entrepreneurial behavior and using this uh, pitching, but um, overall, I'm talking to you uh, in a uh, calm way. I'm not trying to convince you uh, to do something. And indeed, pitching would be very short, very concise. Um, and most importantly, pitching has much more a uh, clear purpose. I mean, what we do in university presenting uh, all our data and our graphs and explaining new ones has purpose as well, right? It's informing the audience. Well, pitching, you're much less informing, you're much more convincing the audience to do something that you want them to do. That can be buy the product, it can be choose your team, it can be recruiting a team member, um, winning a prize. Um, and usually pitching is done in a very different environment than presenting is done. Well, obviously there's sometimes an audience and there's a jury, might be the case in presenting as well but they are much more going to evaluate you on your proposal to the audience and you want them to come along with you. By the way, if you have any questions about whatever I'm uh, saying here, don't hesitate to post in the chat and Marco will translate it uh, to me. Um, yeah, so I've uh, hinted also on a small uh, a part of pitching that I hope is going to be one of the things you pick up from this uh, uh, presentation storytelling. A presentation can consist of several chapters. Uh, indeed, you can dive uh, dive very deep into a graph, as one of you said, and explain the nuance in the data. But in pitching, you want people to um, be engaged from the beginning, like a good story. Uh, the first lines of a good story are always very compelling. You want to continue to read, and while the story unfolds more and more information and uh, uh, interesting facts are uh, are presented and you want to know what's in the end you want to know where we are going and why we are going there um, and the end should be a very convincing um, um, statement and we call that a call to action so we're going to do pitching as a summary of your uh, project but with a very clear purpose and before I dive any deeper into what should then be in a pitch and how could you uh, improve on that story and how are you going to engage in that storytelling, I'd like to start with a few exercises. I understand you're already uh, a few we uh, weeks in this uh, challenge, so you all should know most of the uh, answers to the questions I'm going to ask you. Um, struggling a bit with going to the next slide here. Yes. Okay, so we're going to do uh, four exercises. And each exercise is going to take five minutes. Um, you're all in your team's environment, so if you're not with your complete team in a, a separate room, then make sure you start a, a second call in Microsoft Teams where you discuss uh, uh, this exercise with your team. Make sure to write down your answers, because I'm also going to ask you at the end of the exercise to tell me your results. I would like you to be fast because five minutes is not long for many of the things I'm going to ask for you. Um, don't try to be super perfect yet. You'll have the rest of the day to uh, uh, perfect a lot of the exercises we're doing and to most certainly also expand on them. Are there any questions about this? There are no questions in the chat so far. Um, then let's continue. 
to the first exercise. Um, I'm uh, to, to explain you the first exercise, I'm uh, using the example of Lush because they have this very good storytelling in their in their entire brand. Um, but you're going to do that, of course, for your own food product for uh, the Dutch military. What I want you to do is to describe in a few words what your message, product or company is all about. And here's an example of Lush. They make hand, uh, handmade soaps and cosmetics. That's it. Think of it as a, a, a very short tweet message. And you have uh, five minutes to do so. And for this one, I think five minutes might even be uh, very long. Make sure that this sentence um, is, is short enough to understand in one, uh, uh, in one go. And make sure also your entire team uh, agrees on this sentence. Um, if you're done quicker than the five minutes, just make sure that in the team's environment, the one who's logged in uh, raises their hand or posts a smiley so uh, we can estimate how long, uh, how much time you have. Uh, five minutes go in from now on. Good luck. I see a comment that some students are not in the same room. Um, if it's not possible to find your team, maybe you can team up with some other students. Uh, I think that's fine for this, uh, this assignment as well. Maybe you can make some groups, um, divide them in smaller groups, if that's possible. Well, um, uh, I understood that most of the teams are together in their in their channel, right? In the yeah, I see now a comment that um, maybe because of the of the problems with the Wi-Fi, there are 30 people in the same big room. Ah, OK. Wow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I would propose to make some smaller groups out of these 30 people and uh, and discuss uh, amongst each other. Yeah, try to find your own team and uh, get together. Um, I hope many of you have already a sentence more or less like this. Uh, so use these five minutes also to get ready for the next exercise and, and make sure you can do the next one because it's going to be in a very similar setup, also five minutes for a question. So um, as I see in the picture, maybe um, the ones that you are, <laughs> the ones that you're sitting beside each other and in front of each other can make a team, right? So maybe a team, is that okay if they make a team of four team instead of five? I'm very, I'm very fine with that, yeah. Great. As long as they can make one uh, sentence that will contribute to a story in the end, that's fine. Great. Great, because they're just uh, sitting on chairs, so I don't think they can move. <laughs> it's the regulations. You have three minutes left. Uh, three minutes left over.
One minute left. Make sure you, if you didn't start writing yet, you start writing down your answer. If you're already done writing it down on your own paper, you might take the time to copy that into the chat as well. So I can see and hear from Marco what uh, kind of very interesting products you're making. All right, time's up. I hope everybody is, uh, has made a sentence and I'm looking forward to hear some of the examples, some of uh, the productions of the team. Are some are already daring to type, uh, Marco? Not yet. Um, maybe the groups who work together in a room can start sharing. Okay, we have the first one and it says we provide personal modular meals brought to soldiers all over the world using an app based system. All and right. The second thread is, oh, sorry. It's a lot more information already than just, uh, uh, just uh, 140 characters. And the second is smart, sustainable, satisfying meals on the battlefield. Right. And we have Team Bob makes a sustainable food con concept for the military, which is out of the box. Okay. Sustainable food concept out of the box. Very interested to uh, to go with you to the next exercise to hear what that exit actually means. Um, uh, you see here that uh, the statement of Lush is also very broad um, and we're going to zoom in deeper and deeper and make it more and more uh, specific. Um, let's go to the next one. So, do you want to hear the last two few uh, two sentences, or you want yes, to continue? Yes, yeah, would be okay, nice. Okay, okay. Fresh Food Army creates a satisfying eating experience by personalizing fresh meals for soldiers. And we have no need to be in haste. We have food with good taste. <laughs> oh wow, that's a slogan already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Uh, for this uh, for this exercise, I'm really trying to force you to be very concise and compact in your statement because usually that's the hardest thing of making a pitch that you have to tell all these things that you figured out in just three minutes or four minutes. Um, that requires you to really think about what things you are going to say and which things you are not going to say or leave up to uh, the Q&A session afterwards. Um, let's dive a little bit deeper into your uh, statement. So uh, you've made this uh, first sentence. Now what I'd like you to do in five minutes time, write down a few keywords that describe what you, what you want to share with your potential customer. So this is um, really targeted towards your customer. However, I would like you to try to refrain from coming up with all kinds of, uh, of slogans, however, uh, uh, how, how cool they may be. Um, I would really like you to prioritize and focus on what things you want to say um, and inform your customer about and which things you don't want to inform them about yet. Um, so under your, the sentence that you've just made, um, now use three bullet points uh, like here in the example of Lush, to explain the key principles of your um, uh, proof of concept uh, product. So is it uh, fresh, environmentally friendly, and uh, do you contribute to ethical campaigns like Lush do, or do you have much more food related uh, um, and specific items to mention there? I give you again five minutes to do so. Use the same group you were in uh, for the last exercise 
And well, you might have gotten the hang of it already. We're going to do exercise three and four to expand on uh, this uh, a few times. Um, your five minutes uh, start now. And when you're done, just type it in the chat so we can have a look at it. Good luck. You can only choose three. You cannot post four or five or six. And if you're already getting towards these three points, try, so, try to also prioritize. So if you're already having a few of them, make sure you put them also in the most important, uh, in the order of importance. So. Or lush fresh is definitely the most important sales point. We already have the first answer coming yes. in. Um, and it says we shall I already share it? Yeah, Are please you? do. Okay. We present to you the three S's sustainability, satisfaction, and safety. Uh, let's see, rising to success with the three S's. And then we have the second one, it says personalized fresh towards circularity. And another one is user experience, sustainability, scalability. All right, all right. I hear a lot of words that sound familiar, uh, sustainability, scalability, personalized. Um, are there teams still working, uh, do you think, Marco, or is most, uh, are most of the teams done? Uh, I think there are a few teams still working. All right, let's give them the rest of the time of the exercise then. We have personalized, satisfying, healthy. Ah, one or uh, another of those words, healthy. So on my timer, we have one minute left. And a new one, it says future proof, morale, morale boosting and expandable. All right. And another one, morale, performance, sustainable and flexible. Those are actually four points. I, 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 so the last one will drop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess uh, we can go on to the next exercise. 
That's just going to expand on what you've been doing so far. So I heard a lot of words uh, that can mean different things to everyone. Uh, you know, the famous one, sustainability, but also healthy, personalized, uh, morale boosting. Um, sounds very cool when you read them, but it might also make you think, okay, what exactly do you mean? And in a presentation, you might have the time to go about that and uh, elaborately talk about what you exactly mean with healthy and mention different uh, uh, definitions of uh, what healthy is and maybe even mention the authors of the publications. In a pitch, you want to define those things um, for the audience. So it's a little bit less of the academic and scientific mindset you might uh, uh, be used to. You're going to uh, define what you think healthy is, and that's what that's going to mean from now on from, for your product. And hopefully you are also able to test with uh, uh, your customer if indeed they value this type of healthy or this type of sustainability as well. So for the next exercise, what I would like you to do is give me a little bit more context, but use a very, very, very little word. So no full written out sentences, um, just support some of the core uh, statistics, examples, data, uh, miniature stories to uh, explain what they mean. Have a look at the example of Lush. Fresh for them means that it's their soaps are manufactured daily and shipped the next day. Um, environmentally friendly means unpackaged and not tested on animals. Well, you can think of many other definitions, right, for a uh, organization that uh, environmentally friendly could could mean. And maybe there are several uh, of you who had the word sus sustainability in there. So that's going to be a little bit different for every one of you. And the trick in a pitch is to make sure that when you say we are a sustainable product, that your customer understand that that's also a thing they benefit from. So this specific sustainability part for you and your team should also be understood by your customer. And uh, that can be the soldiers of, uh, of the Dutch military. So they should understand why it's good for them and why it's interesting for them. You have again uh, five minutes to do so. Um, try to be super concise again and type your answers in the chat whenever you're done. And if you have questions in between, um, just let me know. Your five minutes um, start now. Good luck. So the trick here is to really, really be concise. When you're making fresh foods, that might mean all kinds of things that are very important and should be in there. Also for Lush, there are probably many other things they should take into account as, a, as an organization to make sure that manufacturing daily and ship the next day is, can be made possible. But these are the main things they focus on. There are probably many other things they do that might fall under the category fresh, but they've not written it down because these are the most important ones.
two minutes left. If you're getting towards answers, then uh, let Margot and myself know. All right, 30 seconds. We have the first answer. Right. It says personalized, which means daily choices, user involvement, and then satisfying, which means taste and feedback, and healthy, which means nutrient rich and transparent. Healthy is nutrient rich and transparent. Cool, nice. I still don't know what transparent means, though. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, just to uh, uh, briefly reflect on on uh, on that. Um, in the previous previous exercise, you've chosen several words and the meaning of those words. Oh, time's up. Um, and the meaning of those words. And so um, healthy needs some kind of backup of statistics, examples, data, or an, at least some kind of definition uh, that fits your initiative. So really try to refrain then from explaining healthy with words that need explanation further again. So if you're explaining healthy as transparent, I'm not sure uh, uh, what you mean. You can, is it see-through? Is it like, uh, like a glass of water transparent? Or do you mean that uh, you can show all the ingredients that are in there or that the chain is very transparent and uh, you can show that everybody in the value chain is paid any, uh, a fair uh, price so they can take into account environmental factors? What exactly do you mean um, when you talk to a customer? And um, that's the biggest challenge of pitching, as I said before, trying to decide what are the things you are going to focus on and explain and what are the things you're going to leave out. Um, I'm very interested to hear some other ones, uh, Margot. Yeah, we have sustainability. It's less plastic or food waste, local products, products reduced meat consumption. And then user experience is more challenging preparation, more personalization, and more satisfactory consumer experience. Right. Um, and then scalability is multifunctional, inzetbaarheid, <laughs> easy to operate. And another one says personalized is meet the individual preferences, fresh is prepared on the spot. And towards circularity is preventing waste streams and reusing resources. Then we have another one. Expendable is able to increase in surface area with 100% and highly mobile. Morale boosting is personalized and satisfying cooking and, uh, cooking and food. And future proof is zero waste and circularity. Then we have sustainability. We have future proof oh. and circularity. You have another <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, double one. Huh? So really try to um, um, think about your customer as well. What does your customer already know? And then we'll, we'll get back to that to that later on as well. Uh, but I think in general, that's what I see you struggling with now. Okay, 
I have chosen this set of words to explain my uh, product. You are assuming as a team that when you say it's circular, it's healthy, it's sustainable, that the person you're talking to understand it, understands it in a very similar way as you and your team do. But that's not the case. Uh, very often you'll have to um, uh, very narrowly define what you mean by circularity, especially in a circular economy, which is so broad and you could do so many, uh, uh, cl close so many small loops. So you really have to explain if you have circularity as one of your keywords. We are um, using spent grain of beer breweries as a protein source. Um, as an example, so really try to be super concise if you say towards a circular economy. OK, yeah, OK, everybody wants to go to a more circular economy. We can't do the entire thing at once, right? You're going to just focus on one food product for one small group of uh, uh, people in the military. So try then also to just mention one or two of the core ingredients that you are going to source circularly or of the very precise circular things you are going to implement in your company. Um, this will help the audience understand what you mean immediately. And you need that because you don't have the time to show this graph. You don't have the time to let them go to the Alan MacArthur webpage and show this butterfly model and show how you are going to contribute to the bigger picture. You are doing that in the back office, but in the pitch, it's just talking to your specific customer and informing them and taking them by the hand. Don't let any room open for interpretation on the audience side in a pitch. Can I hear some more examples of you and Margo? Yeah, we had uh, sustainability is circularity, less waste, seasonality and less emissions. Uh, flexible is modularity, scalable kitchen and personalized. And morale is boost performance and provides social comfort. We have another one that says modularity is adapting to environment uh, slash mission uh, specifies. Let's see, less people needed, improved design and improved mobility. Yeah. And then you want to comment in or? No, no, it's, okay. uh, I, th I thought it was a good one. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm trying to and, and I hope you are doing that as well. Well, uh, preparing your pitch. Try to put yourself in the shoes of the people who are listening to you. And I'll tell you that until you're, you're sick of it in the rest of my presentation. But really, really try to think of who exactly you're talking to. And you've probably had several conversations already with people from the military. Um, and you've written and read uh, um, about what they want already, about what you want. So try to tailor these definitions of these uh, of your focus so that they understand immediately what it's all about um, that that's the trick of doing uh, an entrepreneurial activity setting up a new product versus the academia uh, where you should be prepared to understand all facets of it now here you just want to understand one facet really well in an operational manner I'll continue with the next one, it's, or it's the same group still. They have self-sustaining is not relying on external energy sources, oil or electricity. Uh, it's waste to energy, it's renewable energy and circularity. And then food satisfaction is feedback loop, loop improved. Uh, feedback loop improved presentation and cooperating with the soldier sensory panel. Right. Um, I think that's uh, about enough examples for now, uh, Marco. Okay. I can't uh, distinguish them uh, from each other anymore. Um, I would like to skip uh, exercise four. Uh, maybe uh, for time's sake, uh, uh, I want to skip it. And uh, maybe we have some time at the end of this presentation to do the fourth one. Um, the fourth one is uh, a little bit more work. There you're going to try to make a very introductory story to your pitch already. And I understand you're going to use the afternoon anyway to uh, sharpen your pitch. So you might use that as a starter up for uh, the rest of the afternoon. Um, and it's also a lot harder to type in the chat. So you're, uh, if we get to it, I'd like some of you to pitch on screen as well. Um, but 
to make this uh, uh, um, day most productive to you, let's go to a break because you've been working hard. You've been uh, uh, focusing, typing, uh, chatting with your team. I don't know about the logistics of all of you in this room. Um, I'm also looking a li little bit at the organization here. I would like to do a, a, just a short break, um, uh, requiring everyone to stand up and maybe do some squats in their own spots, get your blood flowing uh, again, uh, get something to drink, uh, have a chat about something else. If that's not possible logistically, we can also continue. I'm not sure if they can actually uh, move because if I see correctly, um, they're supposed to sit on these uh, on specific spots. Uh, but maybe we can give them, um, yeah, two minutes just to clear their head a bit and yeah, we can continue. So okay, let's do that. Let's do two minutes and then let's do the same for everybody. Um, I'd like everyone to stand up. Uh, just uh, stand up, turn around on your spot a few times, twist your hips and shoulders a little bit, uh, just to get your uh, uh, head to do to do something else. So I'm gonna continue to talk to you, and I hope you can uh, absorb everything uh, that's coming your way. Um, maybe you can lift your knees. I'm not sure if you have the the space uh, uh, over there, but move around. I'm going to move around here as well and uh, grab myself a glass of water and then uh, uh, let's continue again. See you in a bit. I'm uh, also tempted to stand up now, so I think I'm just going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a change. <laughs> I'm really curious to see how the big rooms look like, where the students are. Yeah. There are also a few students that are in their small rooms as well, I believe. Yeah. Hello. All right. I hope you've been all able to stretch your legs. Marco, you did not stretch your legs, did you? No, I'm sorry, but I didn't have to work as hard as a student. That's true, yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right, um, let's uh, all get seated again and uh, stop your undoubtedly very interesting conversations about the weekend plans, the nice weather, swap the parks maybe this weekend. It's probably going to be raining though. No? Is it? Oh shit, really? That's so, but today it's actually perfect. <laughs> yeah, today is very nice. Yeah, maybe we'll continue. We'll see. All right, let's... Uh, oh. What's this? Yeah, so... Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, continue. Um, I asked you previously, what's a pitch? Now I'm asking you what's in a pitch. Uh, we went through pitching versus presenting a little, and I really want to hammer that message home. Some of you gave very good answers to this, but it's also um, about really understanding that in this limited time, you have no room for a lot of new ones, for diving in different definitions, for um, explaining things that are of no use to uh, the specific goal you're trying to achieve. Because that's um, 
where the major difference between pitching and presenting is. For pitching, we, within three minutes, you want your audience to engage with you in what way or another. They want, you want them to pick you, they want them to pay you, you want them to give you uh, the expertise or insights you need. And a very good way to do that is to try to tell them a story. Try to open in an engaging way. We identified issues and there's always in a fairy tale there's also also a problem a uh, princess got missing or a dragon was uh, plundering there is always this compelling start and then there is the story unfolding itself the hero is going through some kind of learning curve um, uh, he discovers certain things he gets new weaponry new uh, things he can use to solve the problem of the dragon or the missing princess and then there's going to be uh, a fight, a climax, the most important thing you're going to tell them, and it's over. And now you want everybody to relieve, uh, have a sense of relief and join and, and, and uh, um, party, basically, about what, uh, what just happened. Crucial for this story, when you want the story to uh, um, inform your audience as well, is that they don't have to think for one minute that there is no problem solution fit and you've undoubtedly worked on this i heard some of uh, uh, value propositions as well uh, as, as a first sentence what you're really really trying to do is match a very specific problem and tell that in an engaging way and then present you your solution why are you and your solution the way to go for the dutch military Right? That's more or less the, the fit you're going to have to con convince them of. Um, I'll show you some of examples uh, later on. Try to get this one in your mind. Problem solution fit is the most important thing of a pitch. Uh, we want to end with a call to action. What is a call to action? The audience is going to help you. Before you know if the audience is going to help you when, when preparing your pitch, you're going to know, have to know who they are. And we discovered in the previous exercises, you also have to know what they more or less know already, how they perceive sustainability. Um, if you pitch sustainability to a group of bankers, you're going to have to say very, very, very different things than when you're going to pitch sustainability to farmers. They conceive these concepts as something completely different. Although in a bigger picture, you might contribute to a more uh, a sustainable uh, society, right? So try um, to think, what does my audience already know about the problem I'm going to tell them? If your problem and uh, your solution in one way or another contributes to, let's say, uh, solving a part of the climate change problem, then please don't start with explaining the greenhouse uh, 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 gas emissions of all our cars and uh, um, the, the greenhouse effect and uh, why that's detrimental to the entire planet. We know about that already. Try to zoom in as far as you can, as, you, uh, as your audience can permit you to do. So be specific and know your audience. Think about before you make anything, who is your audience and why am I doing this? because you want your specific audience to come up with a solution that helps you during your pitch. Are there any questions about this? If not, and no, if, they, not in the chat. No. if they come up later, just let me know. Um, so, how are you going to show them the problem? Um, in this picture, in one second, you saw, hey, that's a problem. That's not good. What's going on there? So I really recommend you, if you're going to use PowerPoint as a supportive tool for your pitch, try to open clearly with your problem. This is going on. I want it to be solved. Um, you can contextualize it, right? Or you should contextualize it. So um, you are not going to solve the uh, Pacific garbage patch. 
you might be able to solve a very sp specific uh, piece of the puzzle of the plastic uh, um, uh, plastic problem. So you might say, uh, um, we want to prevent plastics that are floating in the River Rhine in the Netherlands to enter uh, the port of Rotterdam. You might still show this picture because it contextualizes the problem. We want to prevent this from happening. And then you zoom in. Um, I would recommend not to use a slide like I'm showing you now uh, with some bullet points and a picture. Try to make it, make it even more in the face of the audience. Um, I don't know why my clicker is not working, but um, do it like this. Say, so, OK, 845 tons of waste end up the, in the ocean per year, uh, day, whatever. This is not a correct graph at all. If you show this slide to an audience, they will think, whoa, OK, definitely a problem going on. And now, obviously, the most crucial part of your presentation is going to happen. You're going to link this problem to the solution you have to offer. And this is all just conceptual. There is no proof here yet. There's just explaining that this is going on. So in your case, um, I hope you can define a specific problem that soldiers and uh, the Dutch military have with regards to food. And here you go um, to the solution. Um, the solution should, in one uh, picture, in one uh, blink of the eye, show the audience, okay, what is going on? I understand many of you might not have super cool pictures yet, might not have a professional photographer take all kinds of uh, snapshots. You can also use uh, a text to explain it, but if you have pictures or if you have pictures of examples, um, if you can Photoshop a little, that would really, really help. Because what you now want to do is to uh, show everyone that your solution, well, in this case, the, uh, the ring of uh, uh, yellow plastic that's uh, laying there is preventing other stuff from, from going continuing on. It's a really visual representation of your solution. Try to explain while this slide is in the background, and more specifically, a slide like this one is in the background. You would like to explain to your audience, okay, in what specific circumstances is this useful? And why do we think that is the case? Did we speak to people? Do we have a little bit of proof for that already? And if you can show it, that's even more awesome. So if you're gonna make a food product and you can really say here, this is my food product, and even better, if you can have them taste it, this is the moment to do so. And they can nibble away on your food product while you show the rest of the slides. Um, the value proposition is basically a more specific summary of this um, problem solution fit. I really recommend you to have a slide that's just dedicated to you sharing your value proposition. And I'm sure you, if we have been working with this, uh, our uh, student startup incubator, give an example from uh, for myself, helps students and recent graduates up to two years after graduation to learn entrepreneurial skills by or organizing curricular and extracurricular workshops. Um, of course, I've only chosen a few parts of the total thing we do here at startups. I could have chosen several different ways of explaining it as well. But because of time's sake, because of all kinds of reasons, I chose a specific uh, uh, wording here. And I would like you to do that as well. Starting very engaging with your problem, showing your solution, and then linking them together for the audience really makes you take the audience by the hand and, and uh, well, taking them through uh, your line of reasoning. Then you need proof. So then you need to uh, define for whom exactly is this going to be and why would they actually be interested? So you need some slides that show why the problem is indeed affecting the Dutch military and the problem you've defined should uh, uh, affect a sufficiently large group of uh, people in the Dutch military. And try to visualize this in a graph, in a line, in a, a few dots, or some big numbers. 
this really helps the audience understand the problem at hand. And here your scientific skills come in and also your communication skills. But it, because this can't be this super complicated data graph, right? It should be very concise and summative. The last point of this slide, I would like to uh, put some emphasis on that. Try to really communicate here your customers gains and your customers pains from in, uh, uh, engaging with you. So what you want to do is decrease the pains the customer has, the problems they had, and you want to show them that it has benefits for them as well. Um, if you don't know the concept of customer gains or customer pains, have a look at the value proposition canvas. It's a very easy downloadable sheet and you can work it out uh, over there. It's a really good point. Uh, to, to make in this slide, show a part of your value proposition canvas. Right. And then we need further validation. And this is going to be very specific per uh, team of you. Um, some of you want to say 66, 67% uh, of something is going on, or 80% or 100% or 2%. Uh, right, uh, uh, a very compelling one uh, is the one used by uh, Walter Swam, which is this uh, company in uh, Rotterdam who grows uh, oyster mushrooms on coffee. And they had this slide I watched a long time ago. It said only 1%, and the entire screen was filled with 1% and a coffee cup. Of all, uh, of if when you make a cup of coffee, only 1% of the coffee you put in is used, the rest you throw away. I thought that was a really compelling. Um, statistic and it backs up the need uh, for a solution. So in your case, um, I would really try to find a few uh, large benefits that you can quantify in your slide. But like in science, the people who are listening to you should trust that this is also actually the case and they should be able to reflect on their organization and think, yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah, that's going on. Mm, that's bad. We should do something about that. Um, so you should talk a little bit about how did you get to these numbers? What did you ask them? How did they respond? Um, can you show pictures maybe of people you've been talking to, uh, especially when they're important people in an, in an organization? This really helps. So you need some slides to validate the problem and the solution you're proposing. You should also tell them why you. Uh, because if the um, the audience you're listening to wants to further engage with you, they should also trust the people who tell the story. So if perhaps they think it's a good idea, but someone else might be better at solving it, hmm, that's not what you want. You want them to engage with you. So really try to make an, uh, uh, in an overview the competencies of your team. And why is this person in a certain role and not another one? Do you have a nice mixed set of skills, of education, of experience? And are people doing the right things? I think for a challenge like you're doing, this is a little bit less important than, for instance, for a startup uh, of students who want to uh, begin a company. Because here, the problem of legitimacy for young teams uh, pops up. But try to. Uh, at least be convincing to your own team about why you are good at doing what you're doing. Don't refrain from also asking for help already here. You see on the, uh, the bottom right, they're asking also here for advisors, investors, please join our team. We are missing marketing skills. We're missing, missing um, uh, investor readiness. We're missing someone who knows about food safety. Um, this is a good way to show that you've thought about your team as an important asset in the entire project. I don't know what's happening, but so um, these were the most important types of slides uh, that I think are important to to put in your pitch. They, uh, especially the problem solution value proposition, should be in that order. This is the, the core of your uh, story. However, you can play around with different validation slides and types of slides, and you can also choose to do your team earlier or your team later. That doesn't really matter as long as you have a compelling storyline. 
The last slide, however, should always be your call to action, should always be your question to the audience. I'll show you a summary um, later on. While making your pitch, I have a nice checklist for you. Um, it's a, a checklist with buzzwords, and I didn't define them, and I didn't do that purposefully because for you and your pitch, concise might mean something else than for a scientist who has been working at a research problem for 40 years and who is pitching it into a business, right? So being concise is uh, different for everyone, but still it should be a lot shorter than you're maybe used to in presenting. It should be clear, it should be compelling, it should be a story, credible, so you should validate uh, the things you state. Yeah, you should have some proof in your presentation or in your pitch. Um, you can be conceptual, so you should be able to uh, uh, show the audience the bigger picture as well and not just talk about the practical and nitty gritty. You must be concrete and that means that the statements you put out there are uh, well formed and um, uh, solid in explanation. Custom, you're never going to do the same pitch twice. You're always going to customize your pitch to the audience you're talking to and the purpose you're pitching for. So it can't be the case that you're doing the same pitch twice. Even when you're a super professional pitch uh, uh, pitcher and you don't think ever there could be an improvement on what you've done last time, your audience is always going to change slightly. So you're going to have to customize it. And if possible, it's consistent throughout. So try to make a, um, a PowerPoint look in a similar style. Try to use a similar way of language and a similar way of talking throughout your story. Because if you don't, then the audience can be distracted because of that. Use this as a checklist. I'll share my uh, presentation as well with uh, uh, Margot and the team. So just a small summary. Start with thinking about who am I pitching for and why am I doing this? Two, think of an arch. Think of a story. Think of a nice beginning, compelling start. Think of the journey you and uh, your team have been going through and uh, explaining that to uh, the people who are listening and end with a bang. The order of your presentation should always be problem first, solution second, value proposition, and then explaining why you think indeed, uh, in more detail, explaining why indeed this problem solution and value proposition makes sense. Um, it's also important to show who has been making all this uh, to see, uh, to add some validity and to see, okay, is this to be trusted? So put your team in there and make sure to end with a call to action. So ask for help. Ask for money, ask them to choose them. I really say, if that's the competition you're in, you're going to have to say at the end of your presentation, so that's why I think you should choose our team to win. That's a fine way to end a presentation. You can also say, if we win this challenge, I would really like to cooperate with you in making this a success. Please join us, right? So try to use an engaging way to end your presentation that connects to the audience that brings you closer to them. And last but not least, I would like you to practice. Um, and I have a little bit of time to go over that with you. As I mentioned in the beginning, while well, some of you were still trying to log in, especially uh, yoga is not just for hippies, right? Uh, yoga and meditation can really help you to become less nervous for a pitch. Um, but practice also. If you think, well, that's uh, meditation and yoga is not for me, then at least practice, practice, practice. Also, if you think yoga and meditation before a presentation help, practice, 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 because it's going to reduce the stress and it's going to increase um, the how critical you can look at your own presentation. What I hope you can do with your team is have someone appointed as uh, a presenter, as the pitcher. You can also do it in duos. Uh, you can even uh, uh, all take turns in, in presenting as long as you practice. And don't practice just by yourself. 
I mean, that's fine. Now you can practice in front of the mirror or practice it in your mind while you're on your bike uh, uh, riding to university. But also practice this in front of others and practice this in front of the coaches that you're going to meet in the afternoon as well. Get this feedback and try to not be a boring academia, academic professor. Try to engage your audience. While getting this feedback, ask about that as well. Am I engaging to listen to? Is my tone of voice right? Am I standing upright enough? Um, if you're presenting in front of a camera, uh, you might not have a fancy camera that's uh, movable like I have. You're just sitting in front of your laptop. Try to play with your environment and, and ask feedback on that. Uh, don't, don't just lean on your desk and stare in the camera, but maybe you want to stand up uh, maybe you want to record and uh, uh, try out different things and look back at what you have been doing yourself. It's a great tip, by the way. It really helped me out uh, a few times where I was very insecure uh, teaching for the first time. And then I did a test setup with a few colleagues and I gave them the workshop and I got recorded while doing it. Of course, I gave a shortened version. But then I had the feeling during this workshop, it went really bad. Man, it was bad. I was not doing the things in the right order. I was messy in my sentences. Um, but when I look back to the recording, I thought, well, if this is what I look like and uh, uh, what is to listen, what it's like to listen to me when I'm very uh, unsatisfied with it, I can live with that actually. I, I can live with how, how that looked. So that really made me a lot more secure to do presentations like this one. Um, and you can do this, of course, several times to also try out different ways of you positioning yourself in a room. Um, we have I a think... question, All right. actually, based on the list that you showed in the previous uh, slide. And the question is, do you have any tips to put all of this in three minutes without making it seem forced or rushed that you want to discuss all of this? Yeah, the main tip is, is point number two. So you want to turn it into some kind of a story. You can do that in a typical storytelling way, like uh, uh, showing a pic. This is Bob. Bob has a problem. Uh, when uh, Bob um, uh, is out in the field as a military guy, he um, suffers from this and this and this problem. He thinks the food is nasty or... This is Bob. He sits in an office chair all day and when he goes into the canteen, he always wants to buy the most uh, fatty stuff because the rest is not really nice to taste. Um, try to... Um, and you don't have to make it as simple or as childish as I did just now, but try to um, turn it into a story that other people would like to listen to. And that means that you can use uh, examples or you pick one very good example of a situation where the problem occurred. And then you propose your solution. So by first saying, well, Bob has this problem, you might then say, this is Bob two weeks later after using our solution. He, while walking in the field, had a very easy way of preparing a super healthy meal and he found it delicious. I mean, that's just a few sentences and the audience gets already the idea what the problem solution is. And then you have to dive deeper in that. The most important thing um, for you to be able to be concise is that you have to throw away a lot of noise, a lot of info that is super important for you and your team to understand and to work out, but is not important for your audience also to understand and work out in this deep two or three minutes you have with them. All these details, they need to be uh, uh, on point, but you want them to choose you first so that you can then sit down and have a few hours to talk about it. Right? That's the purpose of pitching. You want them to engage with you because an audience, and I think that's also why you're doing a challenge like this one or why the Dutch military is involved, they cannot sit down with all of you and become experts like you are on your own domain and then choose. They have to choose on the basis of a summary of that. And like in a summary, you're not going to mention certain very specific details. 
unless they are absolutely necessary for the reader or the listener to understand the entire premise. Uh, so yeah, as an answer to your question, use examples, uh, use storytelling, and uh, be, be creative um, there. And depending on what aspects you focus on in your storytelling, you can choose what to validate as well. And uh, validation usually uh, takes most of the time because there you have to prove that what you said and proposed earlier is actually possible to make by you uh, or by someone else in the future. And that the problems you propose are, are real, are actually experienced by someone. Um, so, um, like with many entrepreneurial skills, it's all about uh, setting the right priorities and starting at the first things first. And um, I hope this is an answer to your question. Um, yeah, so I'd like to, to end with uh, be creative, right? So try to think of a fitting way to tell your story. Um, and creativity, despite common belief, is not something some people just have and that sparks out of them. A lot of creativity comes through teamwork and through giving feedback and brainstorming and ideas of others and borrowing ideas and changing them uh, and changing them around. Um, so whatever you do this afternoon, make sure to at least try your pitch five times. At least go through it five times with your team, with your coach. Take your time to actually do it live. Uh, take your time to then with your team look back your pitch or um, uh, give feedback on that pitch and then prioritize and think, okay, this can be improved, that can be improved, this can be improved, and let's do it again. Because that's how you sharpen a story. That's how you can make sure that you actually get a message um, across. Let's see. We are at 11.20 at the moment. Um, we do have a fourth exercise that's uh, uh, still a possibility. Um, we're looking with one eye to the organization as well. What shall we do? Um, we can uh, we can give the assignment as uh, uh, some sort of homework for their own working hours, I think. Or yeah, that sounds uh, like a good idea. Um, I'm just going to quick take you through it then very, very quickly. Um, this whole exercise and these four exercises are building up to, to this one, where you come up with a paragraph summary describing your idea. Um, I think it's a very good way to start because you can point your audience in the right direction or you can use it as, your, as part of your value proposition slide. Um, this is very much a mission statement, right? At large, we believe in making cosmetics that are good for you and the planet. Our products are handmade, our products are made to be used, um, we don't do animal testing and we support all kinds of initiatives. That's basically what it says. It doesn't talk about the problem or the solution yet. It just talks about what they are doing. And that's what this exercise is for. Try to explain in just a few sentences what you are doing. And of course, quite a, a bit of your values will shine through in a uh, little bit of story. Um, I suggest you use this to set the identity of your, uh, of your pitch. What is it exactly that you would like to get across? And if you're not happy with the prioritization you made previously, also, of course, just go back and try to do it again. And make sure you choose with your team these things that you really want to tell your audience. Uh, so it's a good way to start. And after you've done this exercise, you can go to making this problem, solution, value proposition, validation uh, sequence of your pitch and practice, practice, practice. I'd rather have you practice a lot than spend a lot of time in finding these nice pictures that we've talked about before. It's way more important because you never know what happens technology-wise uh as you've experienced today as well 
Um, yesterday evening we had this event, uh, an inspiration about uh, uh, fungi and mushroom innovations. Somehow the presenter, uh, the last presenter, was not able to show his slides properly. He had to do without. Um, that happens, but he was still able to do the presentation and because he knew so well what he had pre prepared and practiced before. Um, so make sure you can also do without these fancy pictures, but it's really nice to have them. Um, I'd like to give you a little bit of time to ask me questions um, before we wrap up. Are there any coming in, uh, Marco? Uh, not at the moment. Let's wait a bit. While you are thinking of your uh, questions, uh, if there are any, I'd like to shamelessly uh, put a call to action in this presentation as well. If you're interested in supporting StartHub for a year, we're looking for board members. Uh, so if you want to meet a lot of cool entrepreneurs, work with me for a year. Um, organize inspirational events, organize ideation workshops and um, build a community, uh, uh, well, build upon a community of sustainable entrepreneurs that are uh, in our incubator already, then uh, feel free to just send a small message to me um, and I will get back to you with more information or answers to your question. Oh. Um, you can also send an email to starthub.wageningen.nl uh, Have a look at our social media. Um, next week we have an event coming up about the plastic problem and how entrepreneurs are trying to solve that uh, with their knowledge from science. So feel uh, invited to join that as well. You can find more info information on uh, mainly LinkedIn and our website there. No questions? There are no more questions indeed. So I think the students are really eager to start working on their pitch then. Um, thanks a lot. I thought it was a very interesting pitch training. Good to hear that. It was a lot of fun to do, uh, despite me not really seeing anyone. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I'm very uh, uh, curious about what your ideas turn out to be. Uh, so maybe uh, we can uh, have a little bit more contact about that later, uh, Marco, just yes. to see what have they been up to. Uh, good luck with uh, preparing your pitch, everyone, and I uh, hope to see you around in, uh, uh, well, the sustainable entrepreneurship uh, domain. Thanks. Yes, thank you. And uh, good luck to the students with the uh...